Guys, in this video, we're taking a look at two of my most favoritest cheap RC cars. This one's box stock. I've upgraded this one. They're both brushed. We're gonna do a few timed laps on the Tomley indoor test track to see which one's fastest. Hope this is my upgraded one, otherwise I've just wasted quite a bit of time. I'm gonna show you a few tips on how to make your stock one drive a little bit better. Oh, these look so cool. So up until this point, the Lancia that they produced was my favorite. And then they brought this one out, the Beetle. Looks a bit like, looks a bit like Herbie, doesn't it? They brought this out and then instantly I was like that. Yep, that is definitely the best one. And then they brought a Mini out. Well, in fact, they brought two Minis out because they also brought a van out. This is a brushless one. Which one's your favorite? I still really like the Beetle. The Mini is awesome. It definitely looks really cool. But I just, I don't know. I just think the Beetle, just pips it a little bit on the coolness. The white wheels of that would probably look quite good on the Beetle, wouldn't they? Maybe we'll swap them. Anyway, this isn't an unboxing and review. I've reviewed so many of these. Go and have a look on the channel, you'll find some. One that says 1 16th scale, the Mini. Because Minis are so small, I'd say that's probably more around 1 14th scale. Anyway, it's not an unboxing and review. These ones are brushed, you can get brushless. The brushed ones come with like a five wire servo, the two in one ESC and receiver, 1200 milliamp hour lithium ion charger, transmitter with all the controls you need. These do have a gyro for stability as well. I pretty much switch them off because I think they drive better without. Three selectable speeds on there so they come ready to run so that is the stock one and then here's mine that i prepared earlier cable management if you knew what my day job was <laughs> anyway we got a little hobby wing esc in there i'm going to leave links to all the uh, bits i've used in the description but we've got a little hobby wing esc in there that will run 2s and 3s we got a dumbo rc receiver there that's also got channels for the lights you want to keep the lights on these and you need to make yourself some connectors up i've got a i've got a special tool to do that one of these i got it from aliexpress I'll leave a link to that. It means you can keep your lights. I'm using the stock motor. I've just put a heat sink on it and I've upgraded to a Metal Gear three wire servo. One of these little JX ones, I'll leave a link to them in the description. Something about these, they will also fit your WL toys, the 144001 and the 112 WL toys as well. They're also a direct fit for the WPLs, the 116 scales. Not the 112s, because they use a slightly bigger one, but these, these will fit the WO toys, the WPL, and these as well, and they're, a, and they're a decent, cheap option. Anyway, so they're the upgrades I've done. I did change the connectors on the motor. I also put an XT60 plug on the um, ESC. They'll mention about this soldering iron. I've got a soldering station. That's what I use most of the time. This is something that got sent to me ages ago. It's powered off of a uh, 3s to 6s lipo you can power it off 6s lipo will give you 67 watts which is decent for a soldering iron it's all about the watts really if you want a decent soldering joint comes with a couple of tips little cleaning station i got rid of the solder that came with it because it was lead free so i just take a bit of my own stuff with me when i'm out and about i've not had to use it out on the field yet but i did solder the motor connections on and that on when i was testing it out so decent soldering iron link for that in the description as well right anyway before we run them around the track to see how they perform. I'm gonna give you a few tips on how to make yours drive better out the box without having to buy anything extra for them. Now in the box, you will find two of these spare steering links. Now they're not just spares, they're actually shorter than the stock ones. If you look down on this one, so stock out the box, you'll see it's got a little bit of toe in. So toe in meaning that that wheel is pointing slightly inwards. That wheel is as well, if you straighten them, they're both just some very slight toe in. Now, if you Google toe in and toe out, it will tell you that toe in is better for straight line stability. Now that is very true in real cars, or I believe it's true in real cars. And again, it depends on whether you're running rear wheel drive, front wheel drive, four wheel drive. These are four wheel drive. By adding these links on, you give yourself a little bit of toe out. So if we put them wheels next to each other, that one's towing in, that one's slightly towing out. Now, in my experience of these, putting them links on and having some slight toe out actually makes them easier to control. You'll find a lot of people complain straight out of the box that they can't keep them straight. Now with this one, I'm gonna show you some footage now. I took this outside after I'd upgraded it to check it was all running okay. And as you'll see, it drives pretty straight now. So no gyro at all. And as you can see, nice and straight. If I bring it past, look. Straight as a die pretty much. A little bit of steering assist just to get it going straight, but listen to how smooth it is. So for those of you saying you can't get them to go straight, um, servo upgrade maybe that I've done. Change them links. Meh. Drives much nicer. Nice. 
So swap them over. Now we have got a little bit of toe out. So the next tip, when these come straight out the box, the diffs are super tight on them. If I turn just this one front wheel, you see all the other wheels turn. Now, if I hold that front one, it's still able to just about turn them rears. I'll show you on my one, if I turn that wheel, it's only the other side of the front that spins the opposite way. Whereas on this, they all spin the same way, which shows you that the diffs are almost locked. Again, that is gonna cause you to have a bit of twitchy handling. I think they want these to drift a bit out the box, but with the tight diffs and the toe in, they're just really hard to control. I have shown on another video how to get the diffs out. It's basically one, two, three, four screws there. One, two, three, four, and then I take this top bit off, five, six, seven. I take that top bit off, pop the suspension off, allows you just to lift that case enough to get the diffs out. And then once you've got the diff out, just remember what way the uh, crown wheel goes in, otherwise you'll have front going backwards, back going frontwards. Um, but you can see, I can hardly turn that so tight now some people will open these diffs up and re-grease them you don't have to they've got some grease in you literally have to get there's four four screws it's quite hard to explain how to do them on here but i just back them off sort of a full turn or more we've got the crown wheel about until you've got it really loose and then just tighten them well you don't have to tighten them it feels like you've not done them tight enough but you literally do it until there's a little bit of resistance and then it's nice and loose do that to the front do it to the rear and then you'll have a car that drives much better. Forgot to mention, it's easier as well. If you take the wheels off, take the top arms off, it just means you can get the drive shafts in and out much easier. So front and rear done. Just that front one turns around and all the others stay still. Diffs sorted out. Right, right I'm gonna get some laps in guys. And then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get a feel for it. And then I'm gonna throw in some hot laps. And then we're gonna put my one next to it straight away. Definitely handles way better than they do straight out of the box. I know I didn't show you it straight out of the box, but well, <laughs> I can assure you, it's not this easy to get around this track when they come straight out of the box. Oh yeah. Right, I'm just gonna go for some laps, guys. We're just gonna go for it. I'll put the times on the screen and then uh, we'll have a look at the fastest time I get and then we'll throw mine on the track. Oh, this is nice. Lovely. Come on. You can slide them a little bit on this carpet. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, this is awesome. So you can see the brushed ones. They're actually not that bad for indoors. You do, you know, 18 mile an hour they do, I think. Brushed ones do about 24. Whoa. Right, let's give my one a go. Now, I was running the other one, I didn't realise I was running with a bit of gyro on it. So, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of gyro on this just so we're in the same sort of running conditions. Right, so it's a little bit more peppy, a bit more control over it with the throttle, but it's certainly a bit quicker. Right, anyway, let's get some laps in. Just gonna start timing from the get-go, just so if we catch a good lap, we can uh, mark it down. This is nice, so smooth. And the parts I've put in aren't expensive either. The, um, the, obviously you're gonna need a transmitter and receiver, but the Dumbo RC one, they're not that expensive. And a lot of people already got them anyway, or you might have your own that you can just transfer over, but the ESC and the Servo, nice little upgrade for this. Oh, I've got a bit of power down that back straight. Oh, I've nailed that lap. Well, wide. I think that's it, guys. I think this is probably gonna have at least a second or maybe more on the stock one. Let's go review the footage and find out the times.
So as I'd hoped, my mildly modified Beetle was quicker by pretty much exactly a second, like I said. And a second on a track that size is actually quite a bit. This thing was awesome as well. So get them diffs tuned, change the links on there and you can have one that performs like this as well. It was no problem at all. Handled that track really well. And I've got some other news with this one. Drum roll. We've got a new lap record. My little WR Toys has got the current lap record and we just broke it with the Beetle. Yes, these things are awesome. And yes, the stock one can also drift. I know, I know. Well, what about the brushless one? How fast is that around the track? Well, Here's the fastest lap from the brushless one. And on that bombshell, it is time to end. Thank you so much for watching. Good night. Yeah.